Hey everyone, it's Dave here, and today we'll be checking out the quest port to VenVR Adventure. We then need to talk about how I look right now. As I was saying, I basically came back to the apartment for a few hours of recordings and then I'm going away again. I was expecting like, you know, two releases for yesterday, but we got seven. Like, it's just overwhelming at this point that there's so much happening and I wanna cover everything, but it's getting ridiculous, honestly. I'm happy for VR, but god damn it, it's going too fast for my taste. I literally have to go in three hours and videos take me to do nowadays two hours so going by the math it's impossible that i will do everything today and it's just unfortunate at this point but i'm doing what i can <laughs> i'm actually going crazy <laughs> okay let's go down to the business so when we are i'm pretty much familiar we've done a playthrough on my channel of that and it was fun especially that from all vr platformers that i did it was definitely the best in terms of just the graphical design and the whole ui and the concept i do remember i found the game to be mechanically repetitive and not very much story driven this part actually confirms that because with the gameplay that I will present you, for some reason the order of the levels in the campaign was switched, so that kinda indicates there is no consistency, and it's basically just progressing throughout the levels, beating the monsters up, collecting runes, chests, stuff like that, you know, kinda Crash Bandicoot style. The quest port is really well done, like I have nothing against it at all, especially like the highlight of the project is the graphics, it was touched a little bit, but then it was compensated in the other aspects, like it's very well balanced that it looks awesome on Quest 2. Aside from the weird campaign choices the difficulty levels actually provide more insight what actually changes in the game essentially the numbers of checkpoints you get in some levels that needed it so basically the casual mode will have like more checkpoints you will get more lives from the collectibles actual quality of life changes for the game it's essentially the same game to me it can be better if you would like introduce more combos variety of the movesets kind of spending system for certain mechanics to unlock more complexity in the gameplay itself like i feel like this game would benefit a ton with just more versatility in general. It's a fun game lacking still in storytelling like with most quest games at this point but hopefully the higher budget from this release will uplift the development and up the quality of it because it can be better. Let's go meet Van yet again! <laughs> To be fair, I should play this game like sitting down and we will have like, you know, flying chair behind me, but it is what it is. So my cell files did not transfer from the Rift version. It's whatever, like I'm here to check out the differences in the playstyle and if something was actually changed, because I have no idea. The difficulty, I don't remember that there was in the game because of course by just collecting runes and chests, we will get lives and stuff, but then it says less checkpoints as well. So that was like my main grip of the game. In some parts, it was just inconsistent with the checkpoint placement so now it means that depending on the difficulty we'll actually have less or more I guess that's fair yeah i could agree with that but we already did the playthrough let me give that casual experience then wake up come on hey welcome back Ven movements can be controlled by the left analog stick to navigate through ven's world you will need to jump over various obstacles Press the highlighted button on the right controller now to do so. There's a checkpoint ahead of you. You have to activate it using the attack button on the right controller. Something about Van, just the environment seems different. Like maybe because I was like playing it sitting down or something. Maybe it's about the colors or just the quest to itself. Like the game seems much more sharper than I remember. The colors are like less saturated Here you i will think learn how to jump over various obstacles to proceed further remember everything i have told you earlier and you will be fine it feels like much spacious if that makes sense whoops sorry <laughs> maybe like the camera is punched in wait actually can we like go back now oh okay the camera actually follows us now okay that's cute then that's what actually I wanted. The game would have a problem to just backtrack to collect runes and stuff like that. And that was like a struggle if you're like a completionist. Even though like completing this game 100% doesn't really give a lot. At least now it's like just way more easier. Basic mechanics are there. Jump attacks. These training bots are here to help you master Ven's fighting skills. Use the double jump and hold attack button to activate Ven's oh. power attack. I didn't know I can hit it. Them. 
now I'm just searching through the missions that I did on the PCVR version. They are mismatched. They are in way different order than the campaign used to be. And that kind of confirms to me that this game like is not linear at all. And story wise it doesn't matter what you will do first. Like Frozen Castle was in third region if I remember correctly. Port Hop was not the first stage. Kind of confused why it's just switched all of the sudden for no reason. But I'm not surprised because this game story wise is sometimes inconsistent and then you stop caring for it because it's not in your face like if you would compare to Moss for example. This game is gorgeous but it just lacks in storytelling in general and the bond that you're like developing with the main protagonist. Those monsters are not from the first region as well. It's new. I have no idea how I'm gonna judge this game then because the content seems like different but from the campaign perspective which is a little bit weird for me someone that completed the game already so is it like a new game suddenly because i don't think that doing a whole playthrough of it now makes any sense even though the stages are switched and some of the content is like reworked I have no idea how i feel like about it graphically i mean it's to be expected this game is still gorgeous like it would not be the same game with just bad textures and stuff like that. When I played it, I knew like immediately it would run on Quest great because it seems like, you know, very polished and stuff like that. And it takes 8 gigabytes for Quest version, so... That's another thing, but like I knew Quest 2 can handle it for sure. But like even for some reason, I feel like even for him, the textures are much more sharper. Maybe it's like Link kind of experience. Because you have like bit rates and stuff like that. So maybe the quality can't be really like judged from the actual standalone version that we're getting. Don't feel like here was nothing. I think we had like some water still and not just floating tentacles. I guess because of the just hardware requirements. I actually wanted to have like, you know, more combos and stuff like that because mechanics wise this game stays pretty much the same all across the board. Like we don't get like, you know, new moves, triple jump or maybe like timed attacks. It just stays the same. Collect events, chests, runes with just different levels basically. The 360 template is really nice. Like it's sharp enough to actually resemble the actual illusion of the environment. Coming! First time I thought this plank was real and I just jumped. <laughs> That's return. So it's essentially the same thing, it's just different order of the levels and this difficulty kind of checkpoint thing. So the core game is here, but it could be like much better, you know? I'm not a developer, I don't know how much time or just effort to take to do like, you know, sequenced attacks and just more mechanically complex stuff. Because of the level of polish design-wise, the concept, the graphics, it could be elevated and maybe it will in the future, who knows? Having a higher budget changes dramatically the development of games like it's a trend on quest that games get better after the release anyways and i want this game to be better because it deserves it the game is pretty much all about graphics and it is almost untouched maybe with less shadows but then we have sharper textures so it kind of balanced out the port itself i do still think that the campaign should be in your face and just the storyline because after a while you just forget what you were doing what was the purpose what's actually the promise of this game but we'll see i'm looking forward to the updates i'm not gonna do the whole playthrough because i already did it even though the stages are changed, which is like a weird decision, but maybe there was a reason to it. Maybe it was inconsistent in the first place, like, I don't know. But all in all, I'm happy with this port. It's just that the potential is so high that I want to see better stuff. That's it.